Hey guys and welcome to this video. In this video we'll be proving one of the grade 11 circle theorems and the theorem states that the line from the center of the circle perpendicular to the chord bisects the chord. So let's look at the diagram while reading this. So the line from the center of the circle so we can see that this is this line OD and it also happens to be perpendicular to the chord and we can see it's perpendicular to the chord AB, that what it does is that it bisects the chord. So in order to understand this, we need to know what the word bisect means. To bisect something means to cut it into two equal parts. So basically, what is going on here is that OD is running from the center of the circle and it's perpendicular to the chord. And what it does is that it bisects AB. So if it cuts it into two equal parts, it would mean that AD is going to be equal to DB. So let's go ahead and write down what we have been given and what we have to prove. So we have already been given that OD is perpendicular to AB. So OD is perpendicular to AB. And what we are required to prove is that OD bisects AB, meaning that AD is equal to DB. So we're required to prove that AD is equal to DB. Okay. So to prove this, we're first going to have to construct some things here. We're going to join the points OA and join the points OB. And now we have two triangles. We have two right angle triangles. And if we can prove that these two triangles are congruent, it would mean that all their corresponding sides are equal, meaning this side is equal to this side, the, the hypotenuse is also equal, and these two sides would also be equal. So that's why we're going to use congruency to try and prove that these triangles are congruent. So let's um, state that we have constructed this. So we're going to say construction and telling them that we're joining OA and OB. Now, since we have to prove that these two triangles are congruent, remember that there are four ways to prove that triangles are congruent. And I'm going to do a short revision of that. But if you already have a good knowledge on congruency, you can go ahead and skip to the actual proof. So there are four ways to prove that two triangles are congruent. The first way is side, side, side. This is when we have two triangles and we have three sides in both triangles being equal. So that side being equal to that side, that being equal to that, and this last side could be equal to that side. And so these two triangles will be congruent the second case of congruency is side, angle, side. So again, if we were given two triangles and these two sides are equal to each other in both triangles, and then we maybe we have an angle being equal and then another side being equal, then these two triangles would be congruent. Now, remember, the triangles do not have to be positioned in the same way for them to be congruent. Here's another example of two triangles that are positioned differently but are still congruent. So you can see that in these two triangles, we have this being equal to this, an angle also being equal, and this side being equal. They're positioned in two different ways, but the thing is that they're both congruent. If you pick this triangle up, and you flip it and let it sit just like this one, you would see that they are really exactly the same triangles. Okay, and then the third case of congruency is side, angle, angle. Again, if you have two triangles and this time a side is equal, an angle is equal, but another angle is also equal in both triangles, then these would be congruent. And then the last case of congruency is right angle hypotenuse side. 
In this case, we have right angle. So this is speaking about two triangles that are right angle triangles. So we'll have right angle and we will, and they're obviously equal because they're 90 degrees. And then we have a hypotenuse being equal. And then an additional side could be equal. Then these two triangles will be congruent. Okay, now that we've gone through a quick revision on congruency, let's go back to the proof and prove that those two triangles are congruent. Okay, so we have our statement and our reasons. So let's first name the triangles that we're speaking about. So in triangle, um, the first one is AOD, so triangle AOD and triangle BOD. And let's see what's equal in these two triangles. So in the first triangle, we can see that the line from the center to the circumference, that's a radius. So OA is a radius. But in the other triangle, we can also see that OB is also a radius. And so they'll be equal in length. So OA is equal to OB. And the reason is because they are equal radii. That's just the plural of radius. But along with them, along with this also being a radius, I want you to remember that it's also, it's right opposite the right angle, so it's a hypotenuse as well. So let's just keep that in mind. That is a hypotenuse. Then again, in these two triangles, we can see that OD is equal to OD because the both triangles are sharing this side. So OD equals OD. And our reason for this can be a common side. And then lastly, we can see that the angles over here, angle D1 and angle D2, are both 90 degree angles. And so they're equal to each other. So angle D1 equals angle D2, which is equal to 90 degrees. And our reason for this would be given because they gave us this. But along with this being a given angle, I want you to also see that it's a right angle. It's a given right angle. So let's just keep that in mind as well. And now we have three things being equal. We have a hypotenuse, a side, and a right angle. So this will conclude that these two triangles are congruent. So triangle AOD is congruent to triangle BOD. And our reason is because of right angle, hypotenuse, and side. So as we can see, that is one of the four cases of congruency. And so because these triangles are congruent, it would mean that all their corresponding sides are equal. We know that these two sides were already equal. Those two were equal already. And now this will conclude that AD is equal to DB, or you could say BD. So therefore, AD is equal to DB. And the reason for that is congruent triangles. And that's the proof of this theorem.